Never Say Die is a one versus many dungeon crawl adventure game that begins by recreating the film and quickly continues the story with a series of all new adventures. One player takes the role of the Goondocks Master, or GM, and the other players each play as the Goonies characters. You can move throughout the dungeon exploring new passages, fight dastardly enemies that get in your way, and search for valuable items and treasures to use throughout your adventure. The Goondocks Master will move enemies around the catacombs and attack every Goonie they see while playing malicious GM cards to hinder their progress with pit traps, cave-ins, flooding tunnels, and more. Each scenario has unique story moments, challenges to overcome, and even boss villains to defeat on the way to your goal. To win, the Goonies are trying to make it all the way to the end of the dungeon and achieve their scenario-specific objectives. But the GM will defeat the Goonies if they manage to move all the sand tiles to the bottom of the sand timer. Goonies never say die. I've been waiting for this game my whole life. Ever since I've been a kid, I've wanted this game. I love this movie. It's one of my three favorite movies when I was a kid. Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, and The Goonies. Watched them every day when I was a kid. And finally, I got the game that I've been looking for for so long. And from a thematic standpoint, I gotta tell you, this game hits the mark perfectly. It feels great. Now, starting off, it's a a dungeon crawl adventure style game. And I think that's really the only way that you could hit this theme out of the park. You know, there've been plenty of card games and things like that that have come out that just didn't feel Goonies. This game feels Goonies. You know, Prospero Hall always hits the theme real hard and they do a great job with it. And they did a great job with this one as well. The characters, the characters have fantastic theme applied to them, particularly Data. Data's character is great, just like the movie, has all those different inventions that he uses to get out of sticky situations, and in this game, he has all those. And you have a bunch of cards, you flip them over to use your inventions throughout the scenarios, and that's just perfect. And all the other characters have great theme too. And one thing that I really appreciate as a graphic designer myself, the graphic design and artwork of this game is terrific. They did, they made such a great decision here with fusing 1980s aesthetic with 16 to 1700s age of piracy aesthetic. They fused those together because of course the movie was from the 80s and it's about pirates. It's perfect. It just feels right from beginning to end. Now, one last thing about theme that I think is important to note is that, of course, this is a one versus many game. There's a dungeon master, a GM, the goondocks master in this game. And I'll get to that in gameplay about how that affects gameplay. But as far as thematics goes, I think this game is it's really important that the player who is playing the GM really get into the theme and really tell the story. And even says in the rule book that you can do that because there's little story snippets in the scenario book, but embellishing those. And when you play cards, embellishing those, telling the story of what's happening really is gonna enhance this theme and take it from a really good theme to a really great theme. So I think depending on your group, the amount of effort you put into it is what you're gonna get out of it. Now, talking about gameplay, let's first start off with the one versus many concept. Now, this is a little controversial because if you look at a lot of forums, you look at social media posts and so on and so forth, it's a lot of people that don't like one versus many. As a matter of fact, I've seen plenty of comments that even go as far as to say, uh, in this day and age, how could they design this type of game? Which I find crazy because one versus many is one of my favorite styles of games. I'm so happy that they made this one versus many. Now, I totally sympathize with the fact that you don't get a solo mode with a one versus many game, and it's not technically a cooperative game, which a lot of people like. Um, so yeah, I totally get that. You, you can't get a solo mode here, and that sucks if that's what you're looking for. But I'll tell you why the one versus many makes this game better. It's because there's an intelligence behind the person that is playing the villains in this game. Uh, there's no way that you could automate this villain and make him take advantage of the situations like a player would actually do. Let me give you an example from one of our games. You know, there was two goonies, one of them went through a passage, a bunch of skeletons popped up. I, as the GM, played a card that made a cave-in happen, splitting the party in half. That was great because the automated game could not do that in that moment, could not make the decision that this is the right moment to split the party in half. You know, now that could be written into the story where that just happens, but then each scenario would be exactly the same every time you play it. When the player is behind those events, 
it really makes the game more rich and more exciting and makes it a little more difficult, which is the next point I wanted to go into is difficulty. Of course, this game starts off kind of easy, and of course, it's designed for families to play. I really think that they were heading towards the, you know, they were moving towards mom or dad playing against the kids, that kind of concept. I think that's what it was designed for. So it really wasn't specifically meant for adult versus adult play, but that doesn't mean that it isn't good for adults versus adults. I've only played with adults versus adults, and it's been great games every time so far. Now, there's one thing that I don't like about the difficulty, and that is how player count affects it. You know, low player counts, it's gonna be a really good game or hard for the Goonies. With a large player count, it just gets a lot easier for the Goonies. There isn't a ton of variation in setup and gameplay when the Goonies, when there's four Goonies versus two Goonies, or one Goonie for that matter. Uh, so that's something that I don't dig. And it seems like Prospero Hall kind of does that a lot. There's a couple of games that I was like, man, like player count doesn't really affect the difficulty of this game at all. And yeah, it's, it is what it is. Now, I haven't played all the way to the end, all the way to the 7th, 8th, and ninth adventures yet, so it may get much more difficult for two Goonies versus four Goonies, but who knows? Uh, when we get there, we'll find out. But at least in the first half of the game, two Goonies feels right, four Goonies is, seems a little easy. Now, I want to talk about strategy. Uh, so this is a low-complexity game, and it clearly is for families. So the strategy of play for the Goonies side is kind of lowish. Now you're pretty much just gonna be moving around the dungeon, you're gonna be searching for treasures, and you're gonna be attacking whatever monsters in the room, and there's sometimes some, uh, you know, uh, scenario-specific things that you can take care of. Now granted, each one of the Goonies has their own abilities that they can use in key moments, that's really the strategy here. It's more tactics, right? Uh, so it's gonna be low on the Goonies side. Now the GM side, was surprisingly strategic. Like I mentioned before, there were key moments when I was playing certain cards. There were certain rooms that I'd want to do certain things to because of certain things that were happening in the game. So the GM side has more strategy than the Goonies side does. Now, is it grand strategy? No, it's all very obvious stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the core deck of cards that the GM has doesn't change. So there's always gonna be cave-ins, there's always gonna be floods, there's always gonna be wandering monsters that pop up, there's always gonna be a pit trap because that's what's in there. So every adventure is pretty much gonna have those. But then each one of the, the scenarios throws in extra special cards that are for that scenario that give you different strategy choices to make as the GM, and I love that. So they did think about making it unique for every single one of the scenarios that you play and giving you cool tactical and strategic options as the GM player. Goonies really don't change per adventure. They're just always gonna be the same. They're gonna be doing the same things every time. Now replayability. Because of what I just said, there is some replayability. Now I'm talking from an adult versus adult perspective here. I think by the time we get to nine, we, it might start to get a little long in the tooth because you do do the same thing in every game. Start off in the room, you move through the dungeon, you fight stuff, you find items and so on and so forth. So it's not like this game is gonna be drastically different every time you play it but they did add some really cool bells and whistles that make it feel different every time. You got these big tiles that you lay over the dungeon board to make it a little different. They got those different cards for the GM. Different items could potentially come up in different situations and treasures can make things different and give you different strategy options. So there's a little bit of vari variety in each one of those scenarios, plus whatever puzzle you have to solve for that particular uh, you know, scenario. So. Replayability is kind of in the middle ground, but then you think, eh, this game was kind of inexpensive. Picked it up at Target for, I don't know what, like 30, 40 bucks? It's not that bad. You get a lot of game in this box for that small price. You can't beat that. All right, so what are my final thoughts about Goonies Never Say Die? If you're a Goonies fan, it's an absolute no-brainer. You gotta get this thing. I mean, if you like dungeon crawl games and you love the Goonies, this is the perfect thing. This is a great adventure game. Is it the best adventure game you've ever played in your life? No, it's no Gloomhaven, it's no Alter Quest, you know? It's gonna be a simple experience, but you'll get that Goonies experience. If you're not a Goonies fan and you don't care about dungeon crawl games, you're gonna wanna pass on this one. But again, it has got a low price point, so you can't beat it. 
I'm a fan of Goonies. I'm a fan of this game. Am I gonna play it a ton? Probably not that much, for, but for its price point, I think you're gonna get your money's worth. Goonies never say die. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we got a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find them at thesecretcabal.com or on all these other great podcast platforms.